Anyways, I would like to look into guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and the presumption of innocence. And so let's get into that. And that is the concept of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, what does it mean? Well, first of all, this is probably the second most fundamental principle. First one being presumption of innocence. You should they're watch. very closely connected and they're very, very similar. I'll call it one and one A. So what does it mean? And I'll give you some examples and talk a little bit about it. So first of all, let's pretend it's not a criminal case, but it's a civil well, lawsuit. In a civil lawsuit, the burden is on the plaintiff to prove to a balance of probability. In other words, more likely than not, the defendant caused an injury, for example, or is, is liable for this lawsuit. So the scales of justice are like this in a civil suit. Well, the plaintiff just has to tip it a little bit down. Oh, better than 50%, more likely than not. That isn't even close to the criminal burden. In a criminal case, has to tip the scales all the way down beyond a reasonable doubt. Now that's a very heavy and powerful burden. Now it's not to a mathematical uh, certainty or a moral absolute certainty. I mean, that would be, you know, crazy to, to have proof of that. But I can tell you this, the case law says this, proof beyond a reasonable doubt is far closer to mathematical certainty, in other words, all the way down to the bottom, than it is to probability, far closer. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's approaching it, it gets there. Now, we're not talking about just mere speculative, I mean, you know, jurors sitting there conjuring up some reasonable doubts that don't exist. So they, you know, it, it's, it's real reasonable doubts. There's no question about that. And this is a very powerful thing. I mean, so that's a pretty good explanation, but I want to show you one more example. And he really explains what a reasonable doubt is versus just a doubt. Um, so let's watch this guy. He has a crazy mustache. His, uh, I think his firm is like Lustachio or whatever. He's a little intense, but it's good. So let's get into it. Well, I'm here to give you fun examples. First, let's pretend you're at a grocery store and you're buying a dozen eggs. What's the first thing you do? You probably open up the packaging to make sure that none of them are broken. Even though the company tells us that they have quality control and they're careful during shipment, we still check because we have our doubts. And those doubts are reasonable. All of us do it. But in criminal trials, you don't get to open things up. You don't get to go to the crime scene and check on everything. You get to sit down and listen to the prosecutor, to the defense attorney, maybe to the defendant, witnesses, cops, and hear what they get to say, what they saw. So really the example is your wife calling you and saying, you didn't forget to buy the eggs, right? And you go, no, I got them. And then she asks you, well, did you check if any of them are broken? Did you make sure that they're not? And you go, no, 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 of course I, I did. I, I checked, I made sure that they're all good. Well, she may still have her doubts. And the question is whether those doubts are reasonable. Are you trustworthy enough? Does she trust you? Or are you a sloppy husband that never checks when you purchase food and bring it back home? Now, the next example is if she calls you and asks you if you purchased that strawberry jam. And you say yes, and she asks you, well, did you make sure it's strawberry? And you go, well, yeah, of course. I, you know, I looked at the label. I can see through the jar. It looks like it's strawberry. And she goes, well, did you check? Did you actually taste it? Well, of course not. Those are not reasonable doubts. Those are just doubts. She's just doubting you. There's nothing reasonable about it. Nobody at the store tastes strawberry jam before buying it. We just trust it. The next thing is buying chips. None of us open the packaging to make sure that the chips that are on the label are actually inside. But after all, Frito-Lays can have a problem during shipment or they can have a problem during making the chips. And if you get that evidence in that the company had a recall because they put the wrong chip in the wrong bag, well then you may have your doubts and those doubts can even become reasonable. So now that you see that in everyday life, we see and we have our doubts, and some of those are doubts reasonable, and some of them are not. So now that you understand how this works, I hope you enjoy. So has the law enforcement given any reasons to doubt that they put the right chips in the bag? I mean, logically, I think that we can all agree that there are places where they did mess up and so just think about that. 
That's kind cute. of. And evidence gathered. But then that evidence went away, disappeared, gone, deleted, taped over. What was in those interviews? What was that evidence? And how much of an impact would it have truly on bringing justice to those two little girls? Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. It's disturbing as we learn more and more about this case. What's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking a few things on this one. It's, it's really, it, it remains as complicated and convoluted as it's ever been. I, what the public is also seeing here is how the system generally works. Here's what we should see, Tony, and this is what I think the real test is. When this goes to trial, if this is righteous and none of these other people should have been looked at to the level that it looks like we think they should be looked at, the evidence presented by the prosecution should be concrete and overwhelming to everyone. Yeah. If it's not, that's when we're going to, everyone's going to do what we're doing right now. We're going to poke a lot of holes in it. And I'm wondering, are, are we going to see that? I guess anything is possible. It, it just seems by the amount of missteps that they've had that, mm -hmm. I mean, we're walking into this with not a lot of faith that, that they, they did handle it correctly, that they, they didn't go down those roads for a reason. You know, if you already have it, everything's over here. I get it. Don't explore those roads. If you really have that concrete case, but I, I just, I don't know that they do. I don't either. And I don't have confidence in it. That's why, that's why that word I'm using is overwhelming yeah. <laughs> evidence. And from what we're seeing, I don't think so. I, but again, it's, it's conjecture until we start seeing the the data and the evidence coming in, you know, we got to go with the data is bring, I mean, the yep. evidence brings us, but in this case, it's every single day, there seems to be another misstep, another misstep, another mishandling. It, it, they keep fueling the same fire they wish the world would put out. And that's these conspiracy theories. And, but they keep fueling it by their own actions. It's, it's absolutely yeah. dumbfounding to me. I mean, are, are we, are we talking about, we've said this before, you know, are, are we talking, is this really just kind of a Keystone cop type situation where they just didn't know what the hell they were doing. They weren't very professional. They, they, they didn't do things to the depth that they should have because they just weren't that experienced in this or they were very, you know, narrow minded. And, and then I don't know. I mean, or is this a cover up? Cause I mean, the two can look very, very similar. I think in most of these cases that we have these things, everyone's looking for one big flaming, this was it. Yeah. But very rarely it's one big flaming thing. Usually it's like all the things we're mentioning, it is all of it. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And when you have this little bit of everything, it erodes at the base of trust and confidence. And I think that's exactly what happened. Do I think there's a little bit to be said about the Odinus theory? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Is it the main drive? Eh. Um, do we think there's definitely Keystone cop handling of... The investigation, especially early on, yeah. yes. Is it the entire reason why it's all falling apart? Probably not. It's it's so it's all these little things here and there that just erode that base of trust that we are looking for in our institutions, in our legal system that I think have really undermined their entire position. For those of you in the chat saying she is way too involved, everyone in this case is too enmeshed with each other. Ag agreed. And Trooper Proctor, this is this is the problem. Yeah, well, if yes. the witnesses are all too enmeshed with each other. The lead investigator should be able to sort that out. But when the lead investigator is part of all of the the um, inter intermixing of everyone knowing each other, that's a huge problem. So the problems created by this these witnesses aside, the lead investigator doubled down in the shit that is this case by not recusing himself. Trooper Proctor never should have been investigating this case. He is way too familiar with everyone involved. Way too familiar. So. Quote, so-called investigation, unquote, and quote, the defense is not inventing, fabricating, or exaggerating these facts no matter how crazy those facts may appear, unquote. I mean, we talk in Canada about the importance of presumption of innocence, and, you know, you never want to uh, convict an innocent person. Uh, you know, better, better to, to have a thousand guilty people go free than convict one innocent person. And this is why we have these principles here. We don't live in Russia where they have show trials or, or uh, you know, a communist country where we, we have these fundamental principles. And, it's so important. So, you know, jurors, it's such a powerful thing to tell a jury. You know, we can, we can tell a jury uh, about reasonable doubt and, and that they, if there's any lingering reasonable doubt, they have to uh, acquit. And this is why we can win so many uh, criminal trials. And, you know, how people don't like that. A lot of people will comment and say, oh, this is crazy. We're letting uh, guilty people go free. Well, 
The thing is, we're not convicting innocent people. That's the key. That is the absolute key. And that's the importance of these two fundamental pr principles, presumption of innocence and the burden on the crown to prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt, pushing those scales almost all the way down far closer to moral or absolute or mathematical certainty than that, that lawsuit here in the middle. Okay. This Fields being one of those individuals who was brought up early, who even made admissions to his sister. He did this, he even talked about the crime scene in ways that he shouldn't have known about. Uh, but they didn't look at him much further. They didn't want to go down the Odinist route, even though they had investigators going down that route.